Hey guys, it's Rich from Buildspin. Hey, listen, what you are looking at is exotic combo number 11 of the Matrix. And we're not here today to talk about this particular combo, but we are here to talk about the material that it, that it uses for the inner disc, which is called Superconductor. And the reason we're doing this is because Superconductor, I have a love-hate relationship with. And the reason I love it is because it looks cool. I can squeeze it in on the side here. It looks absolutely amazing. And the reason I hate it is because, because it has, an, uh, for those of you not familiar with Superconductor, it's copper and niobium uh, rods that run throughout the length of the bar. And the pattern of the niobium rods can be off-center and therefore create an out-of-balance uh, condition in the material. And so you can make a top that's dead perfect concentric and, and perpendicular, and yet it'll still wobble or flutter because of the superconductor. And that's why I hate it. So it's a love-hate. Looks beautiful, but uh, can give you fits as a maker. So, uh, you know, this, oops, I just bumped the table there. Uh, so this, this particular top, I'm not talking about this combo, I'm talking about this exact top. You can see it, it runs pretty true. There's, there's really not much vibration, but you, that's a rarity when it comes to using superconductor and you can expect um, any superconductor top from billet spin to come with a flutter or a wobble. And we're gonna define those two words a little bit later on in the video. And anytime you order a superconductor top from billet spin, it will always come with a disclaimer. Um, every, every superconductor top that we've ever sold came with a disclaimer uh, to expect wobble. The normal billet spin disclaimer is to expect slight flutter. But with superconductor, it says expect wobble. You might be pleasantly surprised and get a top like this, but more than likely, it's going to be one that has wobble because of the out of balance condition that occurs in superconductor. So let's just, uh, I can just show you it. This is why I love it though. Look at how pretty that is. Here, let's get a, we'll get a close up of this one. So you can see those beautiful niobium rods. And the density between niobium and copper is quite drastic, the density difference. And, uh, and so if that pattern's not exactly on center, um, it, it's just gonna throw it completely out of balance. So here's what we do when we machine these things. The trick is to, to get the, the outside of the bar running perfectly true in the machine. That way when it's spinning, it's not shaking around like this. And that'll give us the best chance of getting the pattern. Let me get it in a way that doesn't reflect as much. That'll give us the best chance of getting the pattern right in the middle. But the problem is, is because, you know, th these bars are 12 inches long and the niobium, rod, the niobium rods or filaments inside there run the length of the bar. They can vary throughout the length of the bar. So you'll get some parts of the bar that are you know, the, the pattern is really, really true and other pa parts where it's not. And if you look back at an earlier video I did, I showed, a, this is a fine filament. There's actually 444 filaments in niobium. In an earlier video, I did one of a medium filament superconductor and I, you could actually see the pattern off center. So that's kind of the rub there is uh, the fact that you can make a perfect top and yet um, you still have a flutter wobble. So let's get into, now you're saying to yourself, well, uh, you know, boy, that looks cool. Is there, is there, you know, is there any use for this stuff? Well, yes. Um, I'll tell you the story. I, the first time I used this stuff was in the Navigator top, which happened back in uh, April, April or May of last year. And because I had so many issues with the out of balance, I, I mentioned, I told the members of Billet Spin the following that I wasn't going to use it anymore. Well, several members, and I, I, I should say more than several, a ton of members messaged me and said, hey, Rich, we don't mind some flutter or wobble because we love the look of it so much. Please continue to use the stuff. And I said, okay. Uh, so I don't use it a lot, but when I do, I always put the disclaimer on there to expect wobble. The other thing I found out was I made some spheres on Indiegogo, uh, Billet Spin Spheres, and I was able to use Superconductor and it really looked amazing. And in that scenario, that design, it, it didn't spin and so the out of balance condition didn't matter at all. So Superconductor is wonderful for things that don't spin and don't have to be perfectly in balance like tops. Um, even your hand spinners, you know, aren't as, as uh, delicate to wobble as a top is because they, they weigh more in the designs. There's just more mass there. Uh, the lighter the top is, the more they're going to be sub uh, subject to the out-of-balance condition of superconductor. 
So let's get into, you say, okay, well, Rich, uh, I don't, what do you mean by flutter and wobble? Well, basically, uh, this, is, this is not speaking for all makers. This is speaking for billet spin only. You have three degrees of vibration. The first one, the smallest one, is called DT Smooth, and some of you have seen that. And DT are the initials for a man who is a, a, just a wonderful guy um, and uh, participates in our groups a lot, um, been a collector for a long time. And, uh, but he, he likes dead smooth tops. And so, uh, you know, it was kind of a, a little uh, thing where they would pick on him and they started calling tops DT Smooth picking on him because he was he was always seeking after the smoothest tops so that's a dead true top and what how is that defined that means the top spins with zero vibration all the way to the very end of the spin where it just tips over and then from there you have a slight flutter and if you look on billet spins website on the order pages you'll see all billet spin tops are subject to slight flutter. And what that means is that you're gonna start seeing a vibration 30 seconds to a minute, uh, when there's only 30 seconds to a minute left in the spin. And now we get into actual flutter and wobble. And I would define flutter as any vibration that occurs within the last half of the spin. And wobble would be any vibration that occurs um, in the first half of the spin. So, and the problem is, is that everybody spins tops at at different times, different rates. So I spin the Nexus at about 23 minutes consistently, and another guy might spin it at 10 minutes. Well, if if I spin it at 23 and vibration happens at 10 minutes, I'm calling it flutter. But if a guy gets the top and he spins it for 10 minutes and he sees the vibration right away, he's calling it wobble. So we use my definition and based off of my spin times, and I, and I for the most part, um, I define roughly what my spin times are and what to expect on tops. So that's kind of how we define it. I hope that makes sense to you. But let me give you an example of a, of a wobble top. And what you want to look at is right on the top up here. Let me just stop this from hulling here a little bit. Okay, so if you look right up here, you can see it, it looks blurry probably. Um, but it's, it's not, I mean it is, but it's because this thing is vibrating extremely fast. And this, this probably has about uh, 10 minutes left in the spin right here. And you can see it's vibrating pretty bad. Now we'll go into it at a, at a much slower and you can really see that thing moving around. Um, so that's, that's definitely a wobble. Um, and like I said, because this happens, um, if I spin it wide open, there it is wide open. Let me just stop for a little bit here. You can see you really can't see much at all there. But after a couple minutes, this thing is going to start wobbling and uh, start vibrating there. And so, like, there's probably 20 minutes on this spin right here. And in about three minutes, this thing's going to start shaking pretty violently. And so that would be a full-on wobble with that. So, anyways, um, so the question now is... Well, does that mean we're doomed to never use superconductor? Well, here's the trick to it. If you're gonna use it as a maker, uh, you don't wanna use the outer collar out here. You wanna cut away this outer portion, the outer couple layers, uh, rings of niobium. And then you don't wanna use the first couple inner layers either. And the reason for that is because there's hardly any copper in between these microfilaments. And so this center portion is gonna be the best balanced for sure. Um, and so, so that's one way to do it. Uh, the other thing is to partner this up with other materials that are very dense. So if you cut this out and then you put a copper collar over the top, the copper is so heavy that any little imbalance in the, in the pattern here would, wouldn't really show up very much because the copper is so heavy. So if you had a 10 pound top and you put a, you know, a little piece of lead tape on one side of it, you're not going to see any difference there. But if you had a little top, like say the crown, and you put a piece of lead tape on the side, the same size piece as that 10-pound top, this thing would wobble like crazy. So by adding more weight to the overall top of a superconductor top, um, that's going to minimize your wobble. Uh, the last thing is, with, when you get into exotics, time ascus, here's some, uh, the inner disc of this one is three-color mokume. Uh, we got some two-color mokume here on this one. Um, some more time ascus inside there. Any layered materials, you run the risk because the, the materials are different densities and different weights. 
Um, and so your safest bet, because like Mokume is nickel, silver, and copper, well, they, they vary quite a bit on weights from those layers. The one, if, you, if you're really worried about this, the, the thing you want to stick with is Timascus or Mokutai because it's just two different grades of titanium. And so the layers don't vary hardly at all. You get into a Damascus, you got two different grades of, um, just two different grades of stainless steel. So you say, well, I'd be, I should be pretty safe with that. If I could focus in here a little more. But the problem is, is that when you uh, acid etch this thing, you eat away at just one of those layers and that can throw it out of balance. So any exotic, it's a risk to makers because any exotic can, uh, can produce more, uh, more flutter than what we would deem acceptable. And, uh, and so anyways, but the only reason I still use superconductor is because the, the people in the group have begged me to use it and they're totally okay with, uh, you know, with some flutter and wobble. So that's why I still use it. Uh, hopefully I can come up with some, some other ways to, you know, just use smaller sections of it, like I mentioned with those techniques, and, uh, and still use the stuff and where everybody wins. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was educational. If you got any questions, let me know.